Okay, recording. Hi, everyone. How are you? This is Linda with Singles Travel International, and we're coming to you live with Matt from Isolation Cocktails. And he is going to show us how to make some wonderful drinks for the holidays. So, Matt, I'm going to turn it right over to you. Well, hello, hello. Thank you so much, Linda. Folks, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Matt Leca. I am one half of a crew out of Toronto, Canada, known as Isolation Cocktails. Uh, it's me and my partner, Rosie. Rosie is doing her performing thing and performing at a large hall, singing a ton of ABBA music tonight. So she can't join us. Uh, but um, that being said, uh, for those who don't know me and Rosie, uh, we're two actors who during the pandemic lost all of our work. I started drinking in the kitchen and said, why don't we try and figure out how to make money doing that? And we started our own cocktail company. I have about uh, 15 years of mixology experience and Rosie has her own service and drink experience as well. Uh, but tonight we are coming to you to join uh, because we're not gonna be doing a December class with you. So we wanna make sure that you're prepared for having a couple of cocktails during the holiday season. So uh, this class is we're gonna be doing three cocktails in the next hour. For those of you who are here to make cocktails with us and have the ingredients list and all that, amazing. For those of you who are tuning in and you know watching uh, or you know learning, by all means, you don't need to make them with us to hang out with us. You can have a drink on the side of your own, a beer, a glass of wine, a glass of water, some Kool-Aid seems to be a favorite around here as well. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you right now that we use the chat function a lot in this class uh, just because uh, because I'm trying to teach. Uh, ooh, we got somebody in the waiting room. We'll let that person in. Perfect. Uh, because I'm trying to teach, we keep the mics muted. We do allow you to turn on your mics at different points in the class to talk about the cocktails if you have any questions. But please, please, please feel free to use the chat at any time uh, to ask me questions. I've got it right over here to my right so I can answer anything that needs to be answered in the moment. Uh, but uh, feel free to, uh, you know what? I'm curious. Hmm. How about this? Uh, if you would like to, I'd love for you in the chat right now to tell me what is your favorite cocktail to have during the holiday season? Like, I really enjoy mulled wine. Mulled wine for me is uh, probably my go-to thing during the holiday season. There's something about the warmth on it. Uh, we got a lot of people coming in here, which is a lot of fun. Uh, so I might need to do this whole spiel again. I'm going to do so okay we got we got laura in here we got bill we got sabra who's coming in man we got people on people on people who are interested in making some cocktails tonight which is great all right so i'm gonna do this real quick i'm gonna i'm gonna give the, the quickie version of this just so those who are joining us my name is matt if you have any questions throw it in the chat we're making holiday cocktails tonight so that you have something to make for your loved ones in the future we will let you turn on your microphones in between drinks to talk about them if you have any questions at all uh right now i'm getting people in the chat to answer favorite cocktail during the holiday season and already i've got mark with hot buttered rum and i love a good old-fashioned from linda both of those are uh, absolute classics hot butter rum being an all-american cocktail which we can talk about uh at some point but if you have any questions throw them in the chat we're gonna get going on this cocktail night uh and uh if you are like hey where do I get the list of ingredients? If you're not too sure, if you're chiming in for the first time, I know on the website uh, at uh, Single Life Today or Singles International Travel, Channels International, excuse me, uh, you can find all of the ingredients online there. There is a list and they're all common things that you should have in your house, maybe not the alcohols, but we try and keep this on a small grocery budget. I don't want you going out spending a ton of money. Um, so I'm going to throw our first cocktail into the chat so that you can follow along. Uh, in case you miss something I say, if you're like, oh, I, I don't know how much gin or I don't know this or I don't, you can always find it right there in the chat. There is our first cocktail of the night, folks, and the ingredients you will need. Of course, you'll need your ingredients. What else will you need for tonight? Well, you're going to need something like ice if you'd like to shake those cocktails or stir them. Some kind of measuring tool. I like to use my bartender's jigger, but if you don't have a jigger, you can grab measuring spoons, measuring cups, um, shot glasses, any of that stuff will work for our purposes. Uh, some kind of shaker is always good to have, whether that be an actual cocktail shaker, a water bottle, a Tupperware, any of that stuff works. But uh, other than that, we'll kind of just improv as we go, because that's what you do when you're an actor 
home bartender. You use what you got in front of you. So what cocktail are we starting off with, folks? I want to do a bit of a transition. Last class in October, we did fall or Halloween style cocktails. We were really delving into the fall flavors, uh, a lot of those flavors coming into our cocktails. But now we're transitioning into November and then out into December into the holiday season. So I want to give you a transition cocktail. I want to give you a cocktail that still fits that fall aesthetic and fall flavors, but is slowly starting to lean into the, um, into the December stuff. All right. So folks, this cocktail that we have right there in the chat is known as the Modern English Cocktail. Modern English is the name. And this was created by someone known as Michael Wheaton, who is a longtime New York bartender and uh, bar consultant in the uh, in the New York area. Uh, he created it with uh, in mind to celebrate autumn flavors. It really is a gin flavored gimlet at the end of the day, a gimlet being a very simple gin, lime and sugar cocktail. But this is flavored with fresh pear. Now, usually you could do this with a pear syrup or a pear liqueur, but to get real fresh cut pear is really where this cocktail really takes off. So for this, we are gonna be using about a quarter of a pear cubed. Now I prepped my pear. Uh, I just took a pear, I kind of sliced the quarter off, peeled it and kind of cut it into chunks. Uh, so I've got that ready to go, but instead of using lemon juice for this cocktail, I'm actually gonna be using a lemon. Uh, same thing here, if you don't have a lemon on hand, but you have lemon juice, by all means, but there is something about muddling the juices out of a fresh piece of fruit that really does accentuate the flavor, as well as using the rind. The rind has got a lot of flavor to it, a lot of flavor that most of the time we don't enjoy, but it's definitely something that uh, for cocktails, that lemon rind can go a long way for a lot of things. So per cocktail, you're gonna want about a quarter of a cubed pear or rather a quarter of a cube paired. Like you want to pair, you want to cube it. You want to cube it down and about two lemon slices. That's what we're looking for here. And if you're looking for the equivalent, that's going to be about um, half an ounce of lemon juice is what we'll end up getting. So once you've decided to uh, cut up all of your ingredients, you can go ahead and just toss that right into your cocktail shaker. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to check out this pair. That's a good time. And I'm going to throw my two lemon wedges right into the base. And I'm going to get one more bite. Perfect. Once you have your lemon wedges and your pear into your cocktail shaker, you will need something, something like this, a muddler. Now, it doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't be able to have what Mark has in front of him. You can use anything to make the pear and lemon go squish. I don't care. It can be a wooden spoon. It can be a hammer. It can be a muddler. As long as you can push down on those lemons, push down on those pears, we want to really get going. Now, of course, depending on what pear you got, because there are different breeds of pear, um, you will get a different kind of juice. You'll get something maybe a little more tart, a little sweeter. So this cocktail will change depending on what fresh fruit you use. If you're like, Matt, how do I muddle? Well, you're just going to push down. I like to bring my elbow way up in the sky and really get that leverage going. And I like to push down and I like to twist my wrist so that I get a bit of a stirring action. I'm not just shoveling down on the same piece every single time. But once we get that going, feel free to give yourself a little taste. Oh, lemon and pear. What an absolute brilliant combination. Cannot get better than that. And I'll put my muddler off to the side once I've got my pear and my lemon all smashed up. And once we got that smashed up and you're happy with the, with the fantastic garden of mush in your cocktail shaker, feel free to throw some ice into that cocktail shaker and we'll get going on this drink. So I'm just going to move over here, grab my ice tray very quickly. Now, three or four cubes is all you need for this, folks. Nothing too, too crazy here. I'm going to do three cubes, call it a day. And uh, what's wonderful about a gimlet, a gimlet being a very classic gin cocktail, um, your choice of gin is going to really, really be expressed in this cocktail. So I've got Tanqueray, which is a fairly generic gin. It's a London dry gin. Oh, what do we got here? Feel free to show off what you got in terms of gin over here. Um, we got some rail cart gin. And bring that a little closer, Renee. I just can't quite read the label. I don't recognize it. Oh, Seagram's. Seagram's gin. Amazing. 
Well, folks, feel free to go ahead and do two and a half ounces of your choice of gin. Now, if you have a fantastic um, cocktail tool like this one here, uh, two and a half ounces will be very easy to measure. But if you're kind of rocking uh, anything else like spoons or um, measuring cups, it would be about, oh, ding dong, we got people. Uh, it's gonna be about four to five teaspoons, uh, teaspoons, tablespoons rather, and about a quarter cup of gin, one of the two. Uh, you can either do spoonfuls or quarter of a cup. So four tablespoons or a quarter of a cup equal two ounces. So a little over that to get your two and a half fluid ounces. Next up is my favorite sugar of all time. I am Canadian. So we are going with that maple syrup. Now maple syrup is, uh, I mean, look, I think I'm forced to enjoy it. I think it's like the way I grew up. It's in my DNA. It is in my blood. We are doing half an ounce of that one fantastic fall flavored syrup. Now, if you're going to hit me with, well, I didn't get maple syrup, Matt. I just got table syrup or I got pink. Like there's a lot of weird syrups out there in the U.S. that I feel try and imitate maple syrup. Anytime I'll go to like, I think I went to a Denny's and I asked for syrup for my pancakes and they didn't give me maple syrup, which I just assumed was the default. And I was, I was blown away that I was given something that wasn't maple. But hey, I learned that day that there are many ways to enjoy my pancakes. All right, folks, so we have our pear, we have our lemon, we have our maple and our gin. That is all we need for this cocktail, folks. So feel free to close up that cocktail shaker. And you wanna give this a mean shake. You really wanna get all of that stuff that we muddled out of the bottom and into the top and vice versa. So give it a good hard shake, 20 to 30 seconds is what we're looking for. All right, there we go. All right, we've got a couple of people making some drinks, a couple of people taking notes. Good time, folks, good time. All right, my arms are tired. That's kind of how she goes. Kind of, I just kind of shake until my arms are like, all right, buddy, we went to the gym today. We don't need to go too hard, okay? Uh, I'm going to be using a smaller glass. A gimlet is usually served in a coupe or what was that back then known, a smaller coupe known as a Nick and Nora glass. So this is my Nick and Nora. She's tiny. She's pretty. And she's going to look fantastic when I put liquid in her. Uh, but by all means, you can feel free to use any glassware here. But I would serve this cocktail straight up, meaning no ice in your glass. Because you have quite a bit of pulp in here, if you happen to have a fine mesh strainer, something that looks like a small strainer that may be for tea, I would use it as a double pour. So I would use my strainer on my cocktail shaker and put that through my strainer just so it catches any of that pulp that's trying to escape. Because honestly, uh, look, I know there are people out there who really enjoy their orange juice with pulp. I'm just not one of them. I don't like to chew my orange juice, all right? I don't like to chew my cocktails either. But if you're into the pulp and you really want some of that pear and lemon in there, no one's stopping you. You're making cocktails for you, not for me. All righty. And then in terms of a garnish, it's totally up to you. Uh, you. I would do a cinnamon stick if I had one. It won't change the flavor here. I just think it's going to help with an aroma. Uh, you just kind of give you a little bit of that cinnamon on the nose when you go to sip. Uh, you could even do cinnamon dusting if you really wanted to. Uh, you could do a slice of pear. If you have any pear left over, you could put a nice slice of pear on top, and that would look beautiful as well. But I'm going to stick to it. No garnish here. But uh, whenever you folks are ready, feel free to turn on those microphones and we'll do a cheers together. And if you don't, if you're not making a cocktail with us, but have a drinks on standby, whether that be a glass of water, a glass of wine, whatever you might have, feel free to bring it up to the camera and we'll, uh, we'll do a cheers together. All right, I see people going to grab things, maybe grabbing a drink. So I'm gonna give it a small countdown here and we'll do uh, five, four, four, one, four, three, two, one, cheers. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. Ooh! Yeah, it's good. Very good. <laughs> Absolutely lovely. You should be getting that nice kind of pear and lemon combination coming through quite strongly. Yeah. Now, a gimlet is traditionally fairly balanced, and I actually do think this cocktail is fairly balanced. 
Uh, I am getting those lemon notes, but I am getting a bit of that sweetness from that maple syrup. We didn't put a ton of maple syrup in this, put only about half an ounce, but maple syrup is a very strong sugar. It brings a lot of itself out in cocktails. That's why it's my, one of my favorites. Um, it pairs extremely well with almost everything. I think tequila is the one that I have yet to find a maple syrup cocktail that I like with tequila. But that being said, I think this works absolutely phenomenal. And it's a great autumn cocktail that I would enjoy during the winter months if, uh, if autumn happens to be your favorite, uh, favorite season of the year, which it is often mine. I like sweater and jeans weather. That's definitely, as a Canadian, my favorite kind of weather. Uh, I think this cocktail really embodies that. Um, Mark, what do you think? I know, I know you're probably getting up to put that cocktail in the fridge, but I'm just curious because you made it with us. And, uh, and Renee gang as well. What are we, what are our thoughts? Anything that come into mind when you take a sip? Uh, this is really so good. I enjoy this one. Yeah. I'm not the biggest gin fan, but this is good. Okay. I'll take that. I'll take that ride. I'll take the, I'm not a gin guy, but this is an okay gin drink. I will take that yeah. eight yeah. out of 10 times. Absolutely. Good to it. Mm. Absolutely. And Renee, there wasn't too much mess over there with all the muddling of the pear and the lemon. <laughs> and... You can tell, we're, we're still working on it over here. <laughs> it's okay. If you're feeling like you're getting a little too much mush, a trick of mine is that if it's getting stuck in your strainer, feel free to get that muddler and you can really kind of just juice what's left of it. If you're feeling like you're kind of missing out on uh, the cocktail that's stuck in the fruit happens to the best of us. But please continue to enjoy those drinks that you've just made. And if you rushed off to get a glass of wine, feel free, because at this point, we give you a second to enjoy the cocktail. We also let you know that if you are making cocktails with us, to make sure to wash out your cocktail shaker. You don't want any of your last cocktail in the next cocktail, because we are making three cocktails in this hour, folks. And I know that it seems like a lot to drink three cocktails in an hour. I mean, I feel like I'm talking to the right crowd, people who go on vacation to exotic places, probably have more than three drinks in an hour. Maybe that's a bare minimum. I don't know. I know that when I go out to places that I don't think I'll see again, I try and enjoy it in every moment and every second I have of that hour. Um, but of course, if you're feeling like it gets too much to drink in the one hour, I know uh, my, my favorite thing to do is to take the cocktail, throw it in the fridge, and maybe come back to it in a little bit. They can last in the fridge for an hour or two without diluting too much, without really destroying the flavor, without separating, depending on the cocktail itself. So if you're like, well, I can't do all three in the hour, store one for maybe uh, later when you're having dinner or you're watching a movie or maybe a friend comes over or you know, whatever. So uh, feel free to use the fridge to the best of your capabilities. Mm. But I need to sip and continue and move forward with more cocktail knowledge, stories, and whatnot. If ever you are interested in learning more about cocktails, folks, we do have an Instagram. Uh, for those who are joining maybe for the first time don't know this, but you can find us on Instagram at isolation.cocktails. I'm going to put that down in the chat just so if you ever have questions about a spirit, we get a lot of questions around the holiday season about what should I go out and buy? What's a good gift? What should I bring to a dinner party? Any of those things, shoot us a message on Instagram. We're super, super happy to help you out at any given time. Uh, so, you know, that's a way to, to reach out and say hi. Uh, but I'm going to get our next cocktail, which really does start to move into um, holiday territory. We're going to leave autumn now for good until next year. See you around. See you next fall. I had to put that joke in there. It's just like the dad joke in me. I just had to say it. Uh, all right. Here is our next cocktail, folks, with what ingredients you will need. You will notice that the first ingredient on that list is cognac. Now, for those of you who uh, aren't uh, fully acquainted with cognac, I've got a tiny little bottle of Hennessy, just like Mark. This is definitely the biggest bang for your buck bottle of cognac right here. Yeah, look, Renee's like, no, no, we, we're, we're not messing around with a little bottle. We're going big times. We're going big times. Uh, cognac is a spirit straight out of France. It is a French um, brandy, if you will, in a lot of ways. Uh, and it is very, uh, in terms of tasting notes, uh, a, a cognac is very smooth. It is elegant. It is light. Uh, whereas, example, bourbon is punchy in your face, very bold flavors. Cognac is more, you can have this on the rocks by itself. And really, it's almost like a wine. Uh, in a respect. It's actually fermented and made like a wine. Uh, so it has a lot of connections to wine coming from France. Uh, so cognac is kind of where we're going to focus the rest of the class. 
again, we uh, had the gin cocktail. We did the gin thing. We're leaving it there. We're going to kind of keep looking into cognac. It's also something that gets busted out a, a lot around the holidays. So, folks, uh, this next cocktail that we are going to be rocking is uh, a personal favorite of mine and also kind of is, is close to my heart for a lot of reasons. Uh, but this cocktail, folks, is known as the Chocolatier. So uh, the Chocolatier cocktail is a cocktail that was created by uh, another, uh, how do I say this, like pandemic mixologist or a mixologist that really came into relevance during the pandemic. He's known as the weekend mixologist over on all of his socials. Um, but this cocktail is supposed to kind of represent a uh, a chocolate treat that you would have around the holidays. Specifically, it's supposed to bring out flavors that you would find in a Terry's chocolate orange. Now, Terry's chocolate orange happens to be my stocking stuffer from my mother since their inception. I feel like I have gotten a Terry's chocolate orange in my stocking every year until I cannot remember. So when I saw this uh, kind of be uh, an ode to that treat, I was like, well, I need to, I need to learn how to make this cocktail. I need to learn how to enjoy this cocktail. So uh, this is what we're going to be going with in terms of glassware. We didn't touch on it the first time, but for this, I do like using a larger mouth coupe glass. This is what I'll be using for this cocktail. You don't have to use this for this cocktail. Because really, if you look at the ingredients list and how they're all equal amounts, and we're using Campari and sweet vermouth, if you know one, one or two things about cocktails, you'll know that that's very reminiscent of a Negroni. So uh, it being a Negroni, uh, you won't be using your shaker for this. You will be using a mixing glass. Uh, you, you'll notice their entire list of ingredients is all alcohol. And a uh, piece of knowledge for you, if, uh, if a cocktail like a Negroni an old fashioned, uh, there's so many more, but for say, just for those two, they're primarily alcohol based. So you stir those cocktails. We don't wanna shake them up and bruise those flavors. We really wanna keep those open and stirred to dilute them down slightly, get them chilled that way. So for a mixing glass, you can use anything. You can use a proper Yari, which I'll show you. I have one right over here off to the side. You can grab yourself a proper piece of barware if you want, but if you don't have one, just any other glass will do. You can just grab a regular glass to stir your alcohol in. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day. So um, for my cocktail glass though, I will be chilling it down. So I'm just gonna put some cold water in it and leave it off to the side. You can honestly put your cocktail glass in the fridge if you'd like, or throw some ice in it. it it's uh, something that I feel is a a nice treat. It's nice to have a cold bit of cocktail in a cold bit of glass, where it's like having a cold beer in a cold glass. It just makes sense to me. It's also a little bit of self-care. You want to you treat yourself good. You want to treat yourself like you're the best bartender you can be. So chill your glassware when you're doing a cocktail for yourself. All right. That being said, you've got your mixing glass in front of you or your Yari, and we're going to fill that up with ice. So whenever you're ready, we want to fill this up with three or four bits of ice. And we'll see what I can get out of this dollar store tray. There we go. All right, we are gonna start this off now. It's a very easy recipe to remember this one, folks. Uh, it is all equal amounts. So it is going to be one ounce of cognac, or if we were to be talking like a bartender, one part cognac, one part sweet vermouth, and one part Campari. Now, one part doesn't always mean one ounce. It just so happens to be that in this cocktail, they are all equal. So you can just say, well, if you're making like Renee right now has three people at her place. So as long as they're all equal parts, one part, one part, one part, it can be three ounce, three ounce, three ounce, or four ounce, four ounce, four ounce. As long as it's all equal, that's what we're looking for here. So, but for one, we're going to be doing one ounces. So I'll be doing one ounce sweet vermouth. And of course, if you're like, hey, you said this was like a Negroni, what's different about it? It's just the main spirit here. We are switching out gin for cognac. Sweet vermouth and Campari are the normal kind of components. Those three gin, sweet vermouth and Campari. Those are your normal components to a beautiful Negroni. So I'm doing my one ounce Campari. And uh, the little bit of chocolate note we're going to get here is going to be coming from our creme 
de cacao. Now, this is, I just say chocolate spirit. If you have happen to have a bottle now in your home because you bought it for this class, another wonderful cocktail you can look up and it's very, very easy to make. A chocolate martini during the holidays is beautiful and it takes this bottle to do it. But we're just doing a quick half ounce. So we're doing half a part of creme de cacao or chocolate liqueur. We're gonna get a bit of chocolate in there. And to really invoke that orange, we are gonna be grabbing ourselves. Oh, I'm gonna let our friend Thomas O'Brien to the rope. Uh, we're gonna be grabbing some orange bitters. I've got just some bitters here in my vial and my dasher. And we're gonna do three or four dashes. What, when it comes to bitters, folks, I like to measure with my heart. You're not supposed to, but I like to measure with my heart when it comes to bitters. Uh, bitters are one of those things that really help accentuate and complexify. Complexify is probably not a word. Don't call me out on it, but to add complexity to your cocktail. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just stir this cocktail up. All I'm doing here is just using my wrist to flick that ice around here a little bit. And we're just diluting this cocktail down. We're also chilling it a little bit. When you have this much alcohol in a glass for one cocktail, if you don't dilute your cocktail, you are gonna just get smacked with a punch of alcohol right at the front. You're not gonna get any of the tasting notes. If you ever see a bartender stirring your cocktail for upwards of 20, 30 seconds, they're not trying to give you a watered down cocktail. They're just trying to make sure that those flavors are nice and lengthened. Uh, that's a terminology that we like to use in terms of making sure that all those flavors aren't just hitting you, but you're kind of tasting the full range of those flavors. And we do need water or chilled ice to make that happen. All right. Now, this is a totally up to you kind of thing. I like to... Um, have this specific cocktail with no ice, but because it is a Negroni riff, it is a riff off of a Negroni, you may feel free to use ice in this cocktail. Because I'm using a coupe glass though, I like to go ahead and give this a beautiful straight up pour. I like the presentation a little better. It's just something that I would enjoy more. But again, please, please, please feel free to make cocktails how you like them and go ahead and use a bit of ice if you so choose to. And once you get this beautiful, beautiful chocolatier down in front of you, there are a couple of ways to garnish it. I would do either if you happen to have one. I don't because they're not on sale yet. How dare they? If you had a piece of Terry's chocolate orange, I would definitely put that right there on the rim. No questions about it. A small peel of orange would also be nice. You could do yourself, oh God, if you wanted to go, I would maybe do lemon for color or something green for the holidays. It could be like a fresh herb, like a piece of rosemary, some thyme would be quite nice, something herbaceous. But at the end of the day, you can choose any which way you want. I think I, because I have one, I'm gonna go ahead and grab myself an orange. And I'm just gonna get myself a little bit of orange skin, a little bit of rind here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and express that over the top, really get that zest going, give myself a wipe. I'm gonna to toss that in there and really get that Terry's chocolate orange going. But there you have it, folks, the chocolatier cocktail. Feel free to open up those mics and we'll do a small countdown to a cheers in three, two, one, cheers. 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 Ooh. Oh, Folks, this is what we would call a spirit forward cocktail. This is a cocktail where we're going to get a lot of these essences, a lot of these spirits coming through. Now, if you'll notice in the cocktail lineup here, in the ingredients, Campari, chocolate, and um, orange and cognac, those are all quite heavy flavors. They're flavors that are gonna punch and compete with each other. The ones that most likely went out, Campari and chocolate. Those two should be pretty heavy, but they're also wonderful contrasting bits. Chocolate being a little bit of the sweeter thing and the uh, Campari being a little bit more of that bitter thing. Uh, so you do get a nice balance here, but at the end of the day, I do feel like if I were to make this again, and it's always about perfecting these things, how we like them, I might pull back a little bit on the Campari from my own tasting notes. That's just because I enjoy Campari a little less than I do chocolate. But by all means, many, many people like these types of cocktails in many different ways. Uh, I'm just looking at the uh, chat here. Thanks, Scott. I have to leave for another commitment. Happy holidays. See you all around. Hey, Sabra, thanks for stopping by. Super appreciate it.
Uh, but folks, uh, for those who made it, Renee or Mark, I know you're making cocktails with us tonight. What do we think? How, how, how are we feeling about this kind of chocolate acid cocktail uh, that isn't a chocolate martini? Yes. So um, I, I sort of lean with you. Uh, if I was to make it, I might do half an ounce of Campari and an ounce of the cream de cacao. Yeah, yeah. right? And it's one of those things, uh, Renee, by all means, if you, have, if you folks have anything to say over there? Well, one, one thing that made it extra special is Renee took a garnish of, uh, <laughs> of um, orange and she dipped it in chocolate. So we have that wow. as a combination. And, oh, it was great. Oh. And how was that? Is it pairing well? Is it more of like a bite and sip kind of combination? Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, it's really amazing. Different. Oh, I love to hear that. That's awesome. And that's the kind of stuff around the holidays that you go a little extra mile for those you love and those you hang out with. Uh, you do those little extra things that we're going to do around the holidays anyways. Uh, and let me tell you, after a couple of these, you can dip anything in chocolate and I'm going to enjoy it. Like, let me tell you about it. Uh, so uh, ooh, we got people trying to get in here and make sure I do lots of admitting. Um, but folks, like I said, this is a spirit forward cocktail. Uh, it is a, also a voluminous cocktail. It is a filled cocktail glass with about four ounces of liquid. And when you kind of factor in the ice, we're moving up to five ounces once we kind of blend down a little bit of that ice with the steering. So uh, this is one of those cocktails that I could probably sit and sip for a little while. Like, I mean, I, ter it's, I wouldn't call this a party cocktail or a crushable cocktail that the kids like to say these days, but this is one of those things that I would maybe have after dinner as a dessert treat instead of my third piece of holiday cake. I might have one of these. Uh, mm. Well, there we have it, folks. That is two cocktails down, and we got about 25 minutes to go. So please, please, please uh, feel free to you can you can feel free to put that mixing glass on the side. We won't need it again tonight. But if you want to rinse it out now while you have a minute, by all means, while I grab our next cocktail, uh, which is a, um, I don't know if I would call it a biblical twist on a co classic cocktail, although the name would imply so. Uh, I don't, I, I, after doing my research around the cocktail, it, I feel like the, the word biblical was just kind of slapped on because it was a holiday themed version of a classic cocktail. So I don't think the Bible has anything to do with it. But if you can find a reason why it would, by all means, let me know. Uh, but while you're rinsing out, while you're enjoying that cocktail, let me tell you about our next cocktail, which I have put into the chat just now. So you can take a look at that uh, list of fantastic ingredients. Let me tell you about, oh, I've got a little bit of a blip here on my computer. And let me tell you about that cocktail, folks. This cocktail is known as the biblical sidecar. Now, I'm sure some of you have heard of the sidecar before. I wouldn't be surprised. A sidecar is uh, has a storied history. It's uh, coming up on 100 years old. I think the first iteration was eight, mm, 1934, I want to make sure I check my notes here, because I definitely, yeah, 1934 was the first uh, official writing of this cocktail uh, back in um, David, e. M David A. Embry's Fine Arts of Mixing Cocktails book, and then it was rejigged uh, in the Savoy Cocktail book. Uh, in, in terms of where the sidecar was created and by whom, it is very, very hard to pin down. And we're going back a hundred years to find a cocktail creator because I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of these books that came out around that time, we would say, oh, David A. Embry created all of these cocktails. They're all in his book. That is not true. He is just the first person to have written them down in a book because he most likely learned them from somebody else or from other bartenders, and he kind of just compiled them all. And we kind of have five or six books like that, that we kind of look at the classic cocktails like the sidecar and go, wow, this person could not have created a hundred classic cocktails that he writes about in their books. It just doesn't make any sense. And a lot of these cocktails are so different that the um, like example, when you're talking about spirits coming from Jamaica or spirits coming from the Caribbean, you wouldn't have the same per like same British uh, older, you know, somebody who had never been to that part of the country, be able to pull those flavors and, and understand them like someone native to that country. So uh, those kind of things make uh, pinpointing who created the sidecar a little tough, but 
At the end of the day, the sidecar is a classic cocktail that is really just a cognac sour at the end of the day. It's usually cognac, a little bit of orange, and a little bit of sugar, and a little bit of lemon. And so what we're doing here is we're kind of elevating that and giving it a bit of a spice charm to it by using Grand Marnier. Grand Marnier is an orange liqueur, but what's special about Grand Marnier, it is a brandy orange liqueur, whereas Cointreau is more of a neutral spirit. So this is going to give us a little bit more of a deeper quality to that orange flavor. And then, of course, we're bringing in some ginger, ginger and clove. Now, you can do this in a ton of different ways. I took a piece of ginger, shaved it down, and got myself a couple of dime-sized pieces of ginger, which I will be muddling into my cocktail shaker. But I will also be grabbing a full clove or two. So uh, this is definitely up to you. Cloves, I know, are not everybody's thing. It, it's okay. Not everything, not every drink is made for every person. So I'm going with one single clove. Now, will that be enough clove to even taste in this cocktail? Most likely, because clove is ridiculously, ridiculously flavorful. And I'm sure if anybody here who's cooked with cloves in the past knows that you can put one or two or 10 or whatever into something and you know it's there. So I've got my ginger and my clove ready to go here and we're gonna be muddling. So you will need that muddler that you were using previously. I'm just gonna rinse mine off really quickly here. And I'm gonna get my cocktail shaker ready to go. Now for this cocktail, I'm opting to use just a simple rocks glass. Nothing super, super special here. Just a kind of a short, stout glass. Uh, you, of course, feel free to use whatever glassware you decide to use. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all about feeling. Glassware is a feeling thing. It's not any more than that. You can have a martini in a rocks glass. You can have an old-fashioned, not an old-fashioned glass. It's totally up to you. It's all about how it feels in the hand. But I will be chilling my glassware and setting that off to the side so I can have a nice chilled glass. But I will be getting my cocktail shaker, throwing my couple of pieces of ginger into that cocktail shaker, and my one single clove right there, right inside. Now, you could start muddling if you wanted to, but I do not like to muddle dry. We did last time because we were getting juices out of those fruits, including liquid. But here, we won't get much liquid out of it. So what I would do is grab my orange juice, my orange juice, my wonderful unfreshly squeezed orange juice, and putting my quarter, uh, three quarters of an ounce, excuse me, of my orange juice with my ginger and my clove, because I want those things that I'm gonna press, I'm gonna squeeze out all those essences, all those oils from my clove and from my ginger. I want those to go somewhere. I want them to infuse into something. If I did with nothing in the cocktail tin and just those kind of edible pieces, no liquid, they would eventually make their way into liquid when I pour them in. But having them there right at the get-go really gets that process of infusing started right away. So I'm going to go with my muddler and I'm just going to push down on those little bits of ginger. The clove is already broken up and I can already smell it right out of the tin immediately. Now, again, if you're a big, big clove lover, toss in a couple more. I mean, I will say that it is easier to add more clove flavor later if you'd like it. It's pretty much impossible to take it out once you put it in. So, uh, you know, maybe less is more here. Maybe that's the lesson that I need to take home into the holiday season, that less is more. It's always been a tough one for me. I feel like I'm a more is more kind of guy. Um, so there it is. I have now squeezed that out into my orange juice. Feel free to give your muddler a lick once you're done. Oh, it's always a good preview. Ooh, that's spicy. That's spicy and orange and mmm. Mmm. That's some good stuff right there. All righty. Folks, we've got a wonderfully spiced, holiday spiced um, sidecar on the way for you. I'm going to go ahead and once I've muddled up my stuff, licked my muddler, got a little bit of an idea of where I'm going. I'm gonna fill my cocktail shaker up with some ice. Now, I will say, usually a sidecar, you, uh, if you've had one in the past, you may have noticed that you've gotten your sidecar delivered with a sugared rim. This is uh, something that's fallen out of vogue. The reason why I got a sugar rim because that was the best way of delivering sugar at the time to the cocktail. 
during the uh, early 1900s. As we've gotten into cocktail crafting, we realize that there are better ways of getting sugar into our cocktails, uh, like syrups, like juices. Um, so at the end of the day, it's become less vogue, but it could still be delivered with a sugared rim. That's totally up to you the next time you make it, because I didn't tell you to do that previously with your cocktail glass. But you could do a sugar rim here if you really, really wanted to. I don't think it's necessary. That's why I didn't include it. All righty. So folks, go back to your cognac. We're doing two fluid ounces per cocktail or a quarter of a cup or four tablespoons of our cognac. There it is, just like that. And a little later, I can have some on the rocks later by myself or with Rosie when she shows up after your performance. I'm gonna grab my Grand Marnier next. Now, if you don't have Grand Marnier, you can use any other orange liqueur you have at your disposal, whether that be your Cointro, it could be your Triple Sec, it could be your Dry Curacao. How, if you want to make this blue, you can use blue Curacao at the end of the day, that's an orange liqueur. But I do really do believe that the Grand Marnier really does bring out a little bit of extra oomph out of our cognac. And we've got our ginger in there, we have our clove and our five slices of fresh ginger. So folks, once you got your cognac and that fantastic orange liqueur in there, feel free to, ooh, I don't have the right size tin here. I need to make sure. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to use a different tin. Well, 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 we're gonna just transfer this over the other side. Make sure that all that ginger gets in there. Don't know why those two didn't match it, but that's okay. We always got an extra shaker around. And uh, feel free, give it a little shake. Alrighty. There we go, folks. There we go. Cocktail's nice and shaken. I'm gonna get rid of that water sitting in my cocktail glass, and I'm gonna get myself a nice large cube for this cocktail. I'm gonna get myself a king cube, as they call it. Put that right in the glass, and I'm gonna go ahead and strain this beautiful cocktail right now. Now you could fine mesh strain this if you'd like to, if you really feel like you're gonna get too much ginger and clove rind in your cocktail, you can feel free to. I've actually got quite a nice strainer on this cobbler shaker, so I don't need to, but you might, depending on your size of your strainer, you might need to double strain this, but I'm, I'm not seeing any bits of ginger come out. I can tell that it's still in here. And there we have it, folks. A beautiful biblical sidecar. Now for this, because it's an orange holiday cocktail, uh, like I feel like a lot of cocktails, there are a lot of orange, a lot of nectarine, a lot of, um, I mean, a lot of chocolate. But, you know, if you're trying to eh, keep it low on the waist, which I sometimes am, uh, you can go ahead and use uh, another orange here if you'd like as a garnish. I could even see some grated nutmeg on this if we really wanted to push that holiday season flavoring forward. A cinnamon stick would go nicely here as well. You could even take a couple of cloves, put them into an orange slice and do something really fancy with yourself if you really, really wanted to. A lot of options in garnishing in terms of this cocktail. But folks, once you're ready, feel free to turn on those microphones and we'll do one more cheers to the night to the biblical sidecar, folks. Three, two, one, cheers. 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 Biblical. Cheers. Biblical. Biblical. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, this is like an evolving cocktail. There are many things happening and they hit you in different parts of the mouth at different yeah, instances. Yeah, right. So if you know anything about the mouth, folks, and the tongue, it's, it's very interesting. The tongue has, I can't remember how many taste buds are in your mouth. Maybe someone knows, throw it down in the chat if you find it or Google it. But the way the tongue works, it's a map. So the reason why you're tasting different things at different times, well, folks, is because, example, the front of the mouth, front of the tongue is where we detect sweetness. Uh, so right off the top, you're going to get a touch of that sweetness, touch of that orange right at the tip. And then, of course, on the sides of your tongue, on the kind of the edges, is where we're going to get things like if when you have wine, you detect tannins and dryness is on the edge of the tongue. Similar to things like spice and ginger and clove, we're going to get it on the sides and then towards the back of the throat at the roots of your tongue. As it goes down, it's going to exemplify and keep going. So it's, it's an interesting evolution in this cocktail. Now, it depends if you like that. If you don't like a spice 
gingered cocktail. Well, this might not be the cocktail for you, and that's okay. Not every cocktail is for every person, but it's good to try these things out and kind of go with it from there. It's funny. The ginger hits me quite a lot, but it's funny. The clove is more of an aroma. I'm getting clove in the smell, but I'm not getting clove in the taste, which is like an interesting thing because I know there's clove in here. Um, but at the end of the day, mm, this is a cocktail that's warming my insides, which is very, very nice. Uh, what do we think, Mark? I can see you drinking it. How are you feeling? So for me, I'm still getting a lot of the cognac. Oh, that's amazing. Right? A lot of the cognac with everything else sort of as an accent. Okay. But I, I'm, I'm like, I know that this is a cognac cocktail. It's just not it like when when you typically sip take a sip of cognac you feel the little bit of the burning yeah from the cognac not getting that instead okay. that's where i'm getting the, the the ginger and the cloves oh interesting a little bit of the a little bit of the orange but um it's not very sweet no i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't say this is a sweet the only sugar we put in this was the sugar we get from is the orange yeah yeah. How are we feeling over there in the Renee household? Well, this is good. It's um, it's refreshing, and I feel like I should be drinking it in front of a bonfire. <laughs> hey, there you go. In front of the fireplace during the holiday season. There it is, folks. Well, folks, give yourselves a round of applause. You killed three cocktails in an hour. Let me just remind you what we touched on today. We did a sidecar variation. Again, biblical? I don't know, but that's what it's called, the biblical sidecar. We got an ode to the cherries, top chocolate orange with the chocolatier cocktail. And of course, we started off with a goodbye to the uh, autumn season with the modern English cocktail. Uh, folks, my name, of course, is Matt Lika, and I have been and will all continue to be isolation cocktails with my beautiful partner rosie callahan uh thank you so much for having us it's always a blessing to see all of you folks and to the new friends i'm getting to meet uh hi and it's been an absolute pleasure to see your faces on my screen to the right um i have a couple of minutes before i head off um linda i will throw it back to you so you can wrap up recording but if anybody has any questions about what we did tonight if you have uh, any questions about maybe i don't know holiday cocktail shopping or alcohol by all means, I'll stay for a couple of minutes and, and field some questions. But Linda, I'll throw it back to you so you can you can round it out and finish up. Fantastic. Thank you, Matt. That was awesome. I am going to go get these ingredients as soon as I can and uh, continue, continue on what you've started here. Uh, and if you want to check out Matt, I, as you mentioned, Isolation Cocktails is isolation.cocktails on Insta, correct? That's right. And we are singlestravelintl.com if you want to check us out for other events and travel. Uh, and for now, we will say bye-bye. <laughs>